Hey, man, I appreciate that. Sorry for taking so long, man. Hey, man, I, I do appreciate you coming down and uh, talking to us about everything that's been going on, okay? Yeah, definitely. That's what we're trying to do, man. What's your first name again, man? Last week. What's your middle name? Cody. Any last name, sir? What's your date of birth? Again, I do appreciate you coming down here. Um, just ask that everything you say to us is true and correct and all that, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I know you've talked to a couple deputies. I'm sure you talked to a detective here and there. Mm -hmm. um, they just called us to kind of help out with some interviews and things like that, okay? Um, I want to ask just because, so that way we get fully aware of what's going on. We're just going to go back from from the beginning and, that, and everything like that. We'll just kind of get to where we are now, okay? Uh, um, I understand your girlfriend or fiance yeah. is Cheyenne? Yes. Okay. How long have y'all been dating or been with each other? Roughly a year and a half. I don't know what If you don't mind me asking, how'd y'all meet? Uh, that's through my sister in law. What's your sister in law's name? Brittany. What's her last name, sir? Uh, Lona. She's married to your brother? Yes. Okay. And Brittany is friends with Cheyenne? She was friends with Cheyenne. She doesn't really care the way she, I guess, acts sometimes or something. They don't really communicate. No. Uh, Brittany doesn't like the way Cheyenne acts? Yes. Yeah, I'm not really sure what's the deal with that, but my brother and my sister in law they don't really, they don't really care the way she, they say she's kind of snooty sometimes. And... and sometimes she can be scary. Okay. And they don't, they don't care to deal with people like that. They're kind of the same way, so. Okay. Um, I understand you and Cheyenne live together? Yes. How long do y'all live together? I'm going to say probably at least seven, maybe eight months. Where did Cheyenne live up prior to moving in with you? Uh, or did you move in with her? No, she moved in with me uh, up there where I live at now. Um, with her dad, and she lived with her dad and her daughter on the uh, Duff Road. Or not. Dreamfield? Dreamfield, yes. Yeah. The, the residence where y'all were at? Yes. Right, okay. Before we got brought here. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, does the daughter, I apologize, her name is Meredith? Meredith? Yeah. Okay. Does Meredith live with you too? Yes. Okay. She often visit her grandfather? Uh, yeah. And what, what's his name again? Mark Wheatley. Um, now, Meredith, how old is she? She's six now. She just turned six. Her birthday is in May? Yeah. yeah. How was she as a kid? Uh... She could really be hell on those. Oh, yeah. I, I was like, you don't mind explaining uh, this a little bit. It, she, 
she had her good days where she was a perfect angel, and then mm-hmm. she sometimes just like flipping a switch. She can be completely miserable. Like how miserable, if you don't mind, because I'm. It's just, it's she's uh we we took her to Peace River and everything. They got her diagnosed with uh obstacle defiancy, bipolar, and crap was that? Oh, ADHD. And it's uh she'll be down there on the floor. She'll be playing. She'll be happy, and then all of a sudden she's she can be throwing something at you. Okay. Or wanting to fuss with you and fight with you. Sure. It's just, wow. Some days we're stressful. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it gets you to your, at, at your wits end and stuff. When I get to my wits end, I turn around and I walk home for a little bit. Okay. Then I'll come back and try to handle the situation. Right. Um, got discipline at all? Uh, Timeouts. We did a uh, whip her a little bit here and there, but it 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 didn't do nothing to her. It just did like few. So I quit doing any of it except the timeouts and take stuff away from her. Because if you if you whip her, it was like that was just adding fuel fire. It just made her want to be more combative. More disruptive. So she would put you fight back? Oh, yeah. Fight back. You know how he, I'm pretty sure your dad used to bend you, bend over his knee and stuff. Mm-hmm. She'll throw herself on the floor. Off your lap. She, she would uh, turn into a contortionist. Almost sometimes. I mean, almost to the point that you know she's got to be hurting herself trying to bend that far. Right. So that's when I, I went with the thing, I just take movies away from the TV, privileges, toys. Okay. And then it would have been just, it didn't do nothing for her. It fueled her. Do you know if Meredith was taking any kind of medications or if y'all gave her medications uh, for her behavior? We've been bouncing from medication to medication trying to find the right set of medicines. Did y'all do that through doctors? Yeah, Peace River. Okay. Was she currently on medication? Yes, they gave her three new ones. Uh, I don't know the names of them, but they're on top of uh, the TV and the, not the TV, system, but the entertainment system in the living room. At your house? No, they're at the, my grandma's. Okay. On Drangle Road. No, um, Shane, did she discipline Meredith at all? Yeah, we, we pretty much all stuck with the same pattern. Okay. If we found out something didn't work, well, we didn't use it. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we, we used to pop her on the butt just like any parents did. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it, like I said, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't, most of the time it didn't. What worked the most was time and else to take us up with. How would, um, how's Meredith and Shane's relationship as, you know, mother daughter? I, I know you heard that saying, two peas in a pod, mm-hmm. where there's so much like that they actually, they're, you know, each other hurt that much. I think that's pretty much what it stood for them. I mean, they would, uh, they definitely love each other. But it's like they don't want to be around each other on both sides. That's why when she brought up the thing after Meredith was back here, I just, I worked night shift at Walmart. I know what I was going to do. I was going to go home to sleep. Hey, I'm thinking about the, she wants to go to Grandpa's for a couple of days. I asked her, hey, Meredith, if you want to go to Grandpa's for a couple of days. Yeah, I do. Okay, we'll take your Grandpa's for a couple of days. Um, just to, to get back to what you were saying, they would get on each other's nerves? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, it's like, uh, they didn't really know how to, I don't know, link up with each other. I mean, the Meredith 
mom had to eat chain to chain, had a bad day at work. Mm-hmm. Well, she didn't want to really be messed with, that's when she had to marry if we want to be all over. Okay. okay, but then the, the girl right back opposite way, Meredith, she'd be down here on the floor and not want to be messed with, and that's when Shane wants to play with her. Okay. It's like they just couldn't get it. Couldn't get on the right time. Which, yeah. Did, um, did those two are, I mean, it's a six-year-old, but did, did they have a fight or anything like that, do you know? Well, Meredith's actually took, trying to choke them all out. Mm-hmm. I have took a knife away from them. Uh, I come downstairs one day, and Meredith, even though she's six year old, six years old, she's she's a quite stout little six year old, and uh, I had to pin her arm against the counter and take a knife away from her. What was that? Shoot. I'm gonna say maybe eight. Nine months ago, something like that. That's when I really started. We get, we gotta get an ass on her. We gotta get her help. Because this ain't no way for a six year old yeah. What, what was the purpose of Meredith having a knife, you know? Uh, her, her mom told, no, her mom was cooking. Mm-hmm. Well, she didn't want to listen. Meredith didn't want to listen, didn't want to listen, didn't want to listen. So her mom shut the TV off because I was trying to sleep. And Meredith kept turning the TV up or something. So she said, all right, since you can't leave the TV on a certain volume level, I'm going to just shut it off. Mm -hmm. She shut it off and it enraged. And what? It enraged. Okay. So that's when she came out with a knife. And I heard the holler as I come downstairs and I just happened to get there in time to pin her arm against the counter and take away She went after Cheyenne? Yes. She's also been playing back there in the bed, the bedroom, mm-hmm. and she actually took, took her mama almost out. So I've seen it happen. Uh, her mama was laying back there on the bed asleep, went back there and just, you could tell she was aiming with her knees where it would hurt she would jump straight up as high as hard as she could and come down with her knees on a pivot angle right into the spine of Cheyenne's back I got her to stop doing that because I quit letting her better while she's laying down well that made her upset too and she also tried to choke her yes Meredith tried to choke out Shane several different times. She tried, she tried choking me out once, but when she found out that because she did, I let her. She, I'm mad with you. I said, okay, why? Then that's when she just grabbed me by the throat. And she just started as hard as she could, but all I did was tighten up my neck muscle, you know. Maybe this will let you get your rage out. I don't know what to do from this point. How long ago was it that Meredith tried to show the train? Um, she tries that on and off ever so often about probably between anywhere from, say, the very f- the first time they spent the night, which was like four, four or five dates. And she said, okay, well, can I bring my daughter? I said, yeah, it's fine. We'll bring a couple movies, and, you know, because I ain't just dating her. I'm, I got the package deal, right. so I'm bringing her in. Well, we were watching movies, and about it. that was probably, I'm going to say the second month that, of dating her. Mm-hmm. And then the next morning she woke up. Play it, they were playing on the bed and she started trying to choke her, choke her mom out. In between. What do you mean playing on the bed? What were they playing? They were tickling. Uh, uh, Cheyenne was tickling her. Mm-hmm. And then Meredith, okay, he was happy and everything. And then you just seen like a light switch. It changed from happy to all of a sudden she was 
very angry. Yeah. I said, hold on, you might want to quit. Yeah, I seen her change. That's what Cheyenne told me. And that's when she stood up, grabbed her, and started choking. And then... When was the last time that Mary was trying to show Cheyenne? That, that was... I want to say probably the beginning or the whole it's a last. Probably uh, about maybe middle of uh, the month before July. Okay. This year? Yeah. That was one of the reasons I went to the visit Peace River again. The, 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 the ninth incident you were talking about was going back a little bit. I know you said that was happened about eight, eight to nine months ago. Yeah. Um, so you got you guys living together then? Yeah. No, you said you guys lived together for about seven, eight months. Yeah. So it could have been sooner than that. Or... It it could. I I'm not all that good with that type of timeline. I I because I was working night shift too at the time. Uh, it could have been. It what third me really for a week was I got to take an eye from that six year old that that really dumbfounded me. But yeah, it's, okay. but you guys were living together during yes. that time. Okay, it wasn't and it, it was just and it was they just got moved in. I mean, they just got her toys up there, and got everything set up real good. So they probably around the first year. Okay. What's the um, what's what's the size difference between um, your fiance and her daughter? Who? Like how, how how much taller is is Cheyenne than uh, the Mary? Oh, okay. Or yeah. how much bigger is she than? Her okay. Have you seen how tall Cheyenne is? No, I have not. Um, okay, she's probably five. I'm gonna say five. Five, six, five, seven. Okay. Comes up to uh, the, her head is from the top of her head right there, just below her floating rim. There's there's quite a bit of uh, different height because she's right at I think four foot, but it, all the incidents, the choking incidents, and stuff like that, has been laying down or sitting in a chair. Now, has um, Cheyenne ever tried to choke you out or ever come after you with a knife or anything? No. Like that? Okay. Have you ever tried to do that to Cheyenne? Okay. Just trying to figure out where where Meredith would get that idea. Well, see, this is the same thing I asked her myself. Because mm -hmm. I, I told her, I said, this is not, this is not normal for any C show. She had to see it on her. Mm -hmm. Well, the TV show she's watched, Barbie, My Little Pony. Uh, she doesn't really show any interest in any other TV shows except those two different types. I mean, even her, her you know, just regular cartoon movies, like your open season and stuff like that, she really doesn't care for. It's My Little Pony and Barbie. That's right. And uh, I ain't watched my, uh, much of it, but I'm pretty sure it ain't got none of that content on it. Right. And I, I know you said Meredith was paper acted, right? She backtracked twice. Okay, when when was she first backtracked? Uh, that I heard the same place, uh, Priest River, up here in Lake in Lakeland. Mm -hmm. uh, went to see the med doctor. Well, she started showing out real bad right there at the med doctor. The med doctor said, "Yeah, this this girl needs help." And she asked her some questions. And I don't care or something along the lines. And she goes, okay, well, I'm going to call a friend of mine. And you're going to go spend some time in the hospital. And cop come up. Well, 
I'm not hauling her in my car. She's only six. Okay, but we transported her. He, he escorted us to uh, Lakeland Region, mm -hmm. and we took her to the bank for an active part of that. When was that? Okay, now. The last Baker Act was, okay, her dad's been gone now for roughly two weeks. The week before, about the middle of July was her last Baker Act. And she was, a month before, uh, yeah, about a month before, I had to put her back in there. Mm -hmm. It was about a month time when it came. So roughly June of this year was the first time? Yeah. And she was in there for a week. And it was Orlando Behavioral Hospital or something like that. Because that was the only place that took children of her age. What was the circumstances of her last big record? Uh, we, we took her to see family, uh, that came down to, uh, Mark's house mm -hmm. on Grayson Road. Uh, it was Tara and, I don't know, we got it. That was my, that was my first time meeting. Okay. But, anyway, so, since she wasn't the center of attention, that she's got to be sending her attention somewhat or she's very unhappy. So she started showing herself real bad. Okay, well, did the timeout thing and everything like do at the house. Okay, well, anyway, you know, after visiting for a while, because I just got off work and everything, by 12, 1 o'clock, you headed home. And after? Yeah, uh, yeah. Headed home. And then when we got there, I immediately just went upstairs and laid down. She went to Meredith went to her bed, and Meredith was down there fussing and because Cheyenne wanted to get dressed into her shorts for where she could go back down there and make lunch for Meredith and her. Because I didn't want that. Well, she went back downstairs, and Meredith went sit there and clawed her face. Now, two days before that, she had two bruises on the side of her neck. And Meredith herself said, that's where I was trying to check myself out on the ball. Because all I had money for at the time was to buy her a military tile and style a cot. That could be folded up and out of the way and everything. Well, evidently she was pushing herself into the bar. And it bruised her. Now, did y'all take her to some places did y'all call the cops to come out there? Uh, we took her right to Peach Road. Okay. And then the woman said, oh, no, wait, that was a Sunday. Peach Road, where she closed, we had to wait till Monday. So we took her there, and the woman, all she got to see that day was a therapist. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think she, I don't see what's the problem with all this. But yeah, I'd go ahead and make her actor or something like that because she mainly talked to Cheyenne because she's the biological mom mm -hmm. and Mary. She really doesn't, didn't want to talk to her. Right. But she said go ahead and take her back to the hospital and have her transported back to Orlando. So that's what we did. She took her to Lakeland? Lakeland Regional Hospital, the Baker Acting Unit, and then Went through the process again, and then the uh, sheriff's department and got her deported to the mountain for the uh, transported her back to Brighton. And she just got out a week before she wanted to spend time with Grandpa. With who? With Grandpa. Okay. Mark. Yeah. She just got out, like, a week before. When, um, when did y'all, did you take her, or did Cheyenne take her to, uh, her dad's? Yeah, uh, Cheyenne did. Because I was at work. You know what day Cheyenne uh, took her? 18th. Sunday the 18th.
Kings or July 18th? Yeah. July 18th was a Saturday. Oh, it was a Saturday. Is it, is it, was it Saturday or Sunday? Do you remember? Uh, the only thing I know sure was it was the 18th. No, no, that was the 18th. Yeah, it was the 18th. I just didn't remember. It was one, on one of the weekend days. Hey, yeah, it was 18th. Um, but I did, that 18th was was talent work because I had I had two call outs and I, my crew was short, so I was having to run around do a lot of extra jobs. Were you working at Fall? You call outs mean people didn't show up. Yeah. Work. Okay. What, what hour do you work, if you don't ask me? Uh, 10 at night, 7. And she dropped her off before she came to pick me up from work. And then after she picked me up from work, we went back to the house. I did my normal, I watched TV for an hour or so, and I went to sleep. What did uh, Cheyenne end up doing? Uh, she hung around and cleaned up. And that was that Sunday then? Yeah, it's Saturday Sunday. Yeah. But that's what she did. She hung around, cleaned up the house, did laundry. And whose idea was it for Meredith to go over to her grandfather's house? She wanted to go. Meredith wanted to go? She wanted to go, and her mama asked me if I thought it was a good idea. And I turned right around and asked Meredith if I asked Cheyenne, does she want to go? And that's when Meredith yelled out in the back, yeah, I want to go to Grandpa's. Uh, and I looked at her and I said, well, I don't see no problem with your So what was it, just so I can understand clearly, Meredith asked Cheyenne if she'd go to Grandfather's, and then Cheyenne just wanted to check with you, or? Yeah, yeah uh, basically, yeah, because uh, uh, Cheyenne, Asked Meredith because she was fixing to have to go back to work and there was nobody to watch her because I come home, I go to sleep, mm -hmm. and Cheyenne had the evening shift. So there was nobody to. She was working from nine in the morning mm -hmm. to four in the afternoon. Where does Cheyenne work at? She works at Rose and Plant City. She still work there? Yes. She's been there for three years. And I asked, I asked Meredith, do you really want to go to Grandpa's? Yeah, I had fun at Grandpa's. Okay. I, I figured, okay, well, it'd be better than you hanging around here just watching TV and stuff. You go help Grandpa, you know, do chores and stuff like that, like you always do. Um, how often does Meredith go over there? She's been going over there quite frequently here lately. Why is that? Uh, just because she's, she acts a lot better around him. She's calmer. She's more more compliant, compliant with him. Well, I noticed you, you said earlier that Meredith has to be center of attention. Does uh does he give it up to her? Yeah, because when it's when he's uh, when she goes, he he pretty much don't go and do anything around other people mm -hmm. that I know of with him. It's just her and him. So and he he wakes up in the morning with her. And he pretty much devotes the whole day. He still does his job for the landlady, but yet he pretty much devotes everything to her. When, um, I know you said you, you worked on the 18th from 10 at night to 7 in the morning. Um, when you got off, which would be Sunday morning, right? Yes. Um, did Cheyenne already take Meredith to her, yes. Dad, her dad's? Yes. She said, she said she caught her out. Mark said something, he had to get going on something early. Something the landlady or something wanted done, he needed to get started early. So as soon as she could get it, her there, the better. Okay. So she figured, okay, well, I'll go ahead and do it before she come and pick me up. Do you know if Meredith spent the night, Saturday night, over there, or if uh, Meredith was dropped off Sunday morning, it, whenever she was going to pick you up? It would have, it'd have to be Sunday morning because she was there that night when I left. Okay. When I when they took me to work, because both of uh, she stayed, the marriage stayed with my dad while Cheyenne took me to work. 
but then we got one dude. Okay. So, and then the next morning, she said, I already got married to all my dad's. All we got to do is go home. Okay. Do y'all have one vehicle? Yeah. What vehicle do y'all have? Uh, it's a black HHO. Shit. That's what the kind of a four door yeah, so type like, thing, right? Like, yeah, it's a four door. The way the guy described it is that's a four door, small utility four door yeah. type thing. To me, it's like one of those uh, station wagons. That's what it kind of reminds me of. How long y'all had that? Um, we didn't have had that very long, maybe four or five months. Because her Mustang started giving her real trouble, the whole front end started going out. I said, well, if you're, if you're going to be out there now, I want you to have around something dependable. Yeah. I don't want to be at work and then you could wait and see if you're even going to be able to come get me in the morning because of me. So yeah. that's when I come up with the idea of trading the Mustang and get that. Um, when was the last time Cheyenne talked to Meredith or her dad? Uh, she called her dad like the following day after she dropped her off. And it's like he uh, answered the phone and turned around and walked off from the phone talking to Meredith. It was only a 30 second call and then the call ended. So on the 20th then maybe? Yes. Like I said, the day from. Now how do you know about that conversation? Were you present when Cheyenne called or did Cheyenne tell you? I was I was somewhat coherent with it mm -hmm. and then I was also told about it. What do you mean somewhat coherent? Cause if, hey, I was, I, she made the phone call while she was laying in bed beside me and I was, I rolled over. So I was kind of awake, but kind of not awake. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've done it. Mm -hmm. And I asked her, who you call her? Call this. Okay. Yeah, was it like in that morning or oh, evening? It, 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 it had to be, a, it was probably about 10, 11 in the morning. Okay. Because then... Usually, if he ain't already doing something for the landlady, mm -hmm. he's fixing to start doing something. And he, sometimes he don't like being interrupted while he's doing it because he's trying to focus all on what he's doing. And then he had Meredith too, so he's playing with Meredith. And plus, did, he don't have much to say over the phone anyway. Did Shane say whether she hung up, they, they survived each other? Did uh, One person ended up hanging out. Or she, she said, uh, all that happened was call ended. She wasn't sure if maybe just lost signal or whatever. She took it as he was busy because mm -hmm. the lady walked off from the phone. Okay, I'll try later. Okay. And then I think she texted him or something later that afternoon. While Meredith has been gone, have you attempted to call... Um, Mark. Yeah, Mark. I texted him, call him. I, te I texted him. What was the first time you attempted to call him? Uh, uh, right after I got the, the sheet. Yeah, right after I got the 22nd. The 22nd of July, when he sent me the text messages. That he ain't coming back and get, go ahead and get rid of all this stuff and that, well, I immediately turned around and tried to call him and text him. Okay, hold on one second. What did the text message say? Uh, the first one, uh, tell Shia to get minutes on her phone or something. All I can get her is her voicemail. Well, at her job, she was working that day, so she shut her phone to vibrate. Mm -hmm. And she's at the cash register, she's not about to. So the answer the phone. Yeah, answer the phone. So one message said, tell Cheyenne to put minutes on her phone? Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, the next part of it was, uh, I got what my mom's got. 
Okay, well, first off, I didn't mean that me because I don't know his mom. Yeah, I didn't know that part. Um, yeah, then it went on down. I'm not, I'm not, go ahead and get, get rid of my stuff. I'm not coming back down there. I got all I want up here. My brother, my uh, brother, Meredith, and tell her. Cheyenne that she's, she's lucky to have a guy like you, and then that was it. Yeah. Well, I immediately turned around and tried to call him. Hold on one second, okay. When, was this all one long message or message it, after it message? Was, it was, because he uses that voice recording, mm -hmm. it does, and then he sends and so he does a little, another little spot and send it, and none of us want to send it. So it's just several messages, one after the other? Yes. Okay. And what time a day was that on the 22nd? Um, it had to be in the afternoon, because, yeah, it has to be around 4 or 5 o'clock, because I just woke up. And I can't, I can't remember if I turned around and called him right then. Or waited till Cheyenne got home. I, no, I tried to get in touch with Cheyenne because she had minutes on her phone. It was because she had no library. I was trying to see where she's at and see if she had any contact with him prior. Where was uh, she at? She was at work. And Meredith was still with Grandma. Okay. And she works at where again? Logan's? Logan's my city. So did Mark say he was leaving with Meredith or what? On the text message? Uh, yeah, he said he'd taken her up in Georgia with him. Is that what he said? Yeah, that was part of the text message. Uh, part of one of the text messages I can't remember. The very first part of the, it was in there. What, what do you remember about that message specifically? Uh, taking Meredith up to Georgia and then it, then it's to her grandmother's. I'm taking Meredith up to her grandmother's in Georgia. And then it, it's like way a short period and it was, yeah, I'm not coming back. I got what I want and it went into the other side. That's why I left all of it on there. So you said I'm not coming back to get rid of my stuff? Yeah. What, um, who's the grandmother? Like, uh, I'm the only grandmother that me and Cheyenne could think of was the guy that she got knocked up by and had Meredith by mm -hmm. his mom, which is I think Catherine. Something. Does she live in Georgia? Yeah, she's up there somewhere. Does uh, Mark know her? As far as I know, not really. Just what Cheyenne told her, told him about her. Do you think that's kind of kind of odd? No. Given that I guess they really don't have a relationship or anything. That sounded odd to me. This whole situation sounded odd to me. Does uh, Mark, do you know if he sees a doctor by chance? Uh, no, because he keeps all that private. One of the text messages, the part that I had what my mama had, cancer, and the doctor only gave me one year to live, so that saying the doctor only gave me one year to live, I'm assuming he's seen the doctor somewhere. But as far as I really well, no, prior, to, uh, the prior to that text, he had never mentioned, not to me. Okay. The prior to that never made mention of suffering follow being sick or anything like that? No. Okay. Um, okay, so. What time did Cheyenne get back that night? Because you said you waited until she got back. Yeah, she got home. She worked uh, from, uh, it was like uh, four to nine that night. Mm -hmm. She got home at nine. And then yeah. I waited to tell her about the text message because I didn't want her trying to deal with that and drive too. So when she got home, I let, I let her read the text message. What did she do or how she act? Oh, uh, she broke down. She crying, 
Start cleaning everything. I said, well, the best thing to do right now is see if we can get in touch with you. So that's when she started texting him and calling. And she never got in touch with him. So he never picked up, never, never replied back to him. Yeah, after the, 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 the 22nd home, we had not heard nothing from him or Meredith or she. On my knowledge. Okay. Um, did y'all think to drive over there? I mean, he's saying uh, that. Yeah, I believe she did uh, the next morning because she had to get up early the next morning to go over anyway. Or go, so I think she went ahead and went over there. When is her she, Hold on, she might, she might have called, uh, what's his name, Josh. Josh lived right next door. Mm-hmm. He, hey, she might have called no, him. Do you know if she did? Uh, I'm not positive. Yeah, I'm not positive. That's a, it's a possibility. I'm not 100% on it. Or anything, so. On, on that. Okay. Um, the Cheyenne didn't go over there. Yeah. She didn't no. go over there that night. That's funny. You think she may have went over that next day, which would have been the 23rd? Uh, I'm pretty sure she did. Did she say, hey, I'm going to my dad's house to find what's going on? Or what, why do you think she did? I believe she told me she did once she got, uh, she uh, carried me home. I believe she told me, yeah, I'm going to go to my dad's and see what's going on. All right, so you worked the night of the 22nd, and after this text message is? Yeah, because I'm off Tuesday night and Wednesday night. Okay. I don't know what the 22nd was. The 22nd was a Wednesday. It was Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah, I had to go back to work Thursday night, so. Okay. So, but on the 23rd that morning? 23rd that morning? Yeah, 23rd is a Thursday. I believe that's when we both had it over there. Yes. Okay. So you did go over to... I, I believe so, and I didn't see nothing. His truck's there, the dog was out in the pen, and that was... I, I never seen nobody. Okay, so the, the morning after you get these text messages, you and her go to Marcel. Yeah. You know approximately what time it was when you guys went over there? Uh, it was early. Uh, somewhere between, I want to say, 8 and maybe... 11 because she woke up and we sat there and talked about it a little bit because she was still trying to make sense of it and I, and I told her the best thing to do right now is just go over there. Okay. You said Mark's truck? The truck was parked what, there. What kind of truck is it? It's an F, F350 Dooley Harley Davidson edition. Me personally, I ain't never but that truck was there? The truck was parked under the canvas. For that part. I was told he has another vehicle, is that right? He has a, a Dodge that's in the back and don't run. Okay. Uh, uh, the original F100 Ranger, it don't run. Well, I was told something about a suburb Suburban. Now that was parked in the front. We call them staff the landlades that he uses to go around and do the work and the trailers for the trailer. Was it parked at Mark's house? Yes. Up front? Yep. Right there in front of the porch. And where was the F-350 at? Parked, uh, okay, you got the house, mm -hmm. you got the suburban park here, mm -hmm. you got a park thing right here, and this is where F-350 was. So kind of like in the backyard? Uh, the back that's, side? Yeah, because the way the driveway is, you pull in like this, and you cut a little bit, and you can go right up underneath the car. So it's kind of to the side of the house, yeah. to the left of it? Yeah. That's where it normally parks it? Yeah, that's where it, yeah. And to be honest, that truck didn't look like it would move for a while. Okay. Um, how the, y'all went inside? Or do you stay outside? To be honest with you, I don't remember because she started 
crying because she kept calling and trying to text him and couldn't get over it. You said it was a dog there too? He had his dog? Yeah. What was the dog at? Uh, the dog was on one of those camel things. You uh, up on the porch and then you go down behind the like lattice stuff he got there where you can't see into the backyard. It was built from the bear and the dog was down. Was that where the normally at? Uh, no, he, that's, that was brand new. He just bought it and put the dog outside. Because usually the dog's in the house. Brand new as far as, like, when? Uh, it still had the barcode sticker on it. Okay. That's how new it looked. I mean, it's, the dog kennel you would buy up like a tractor supply, mm -hmm. and it ain't even tarnished or, so it, it had to be reached. Now, when I went there, you said you did not go inside? I, I don't remember on that, really, because she started crying and everything. And Do you remember you going inside? Uh, I, I definitely don't remember me going inside, no. Okay. Now, uh, does Cheyenne have a key to her father's house? Yes, she has her own key. And everything to the door. Could Cheyenne have gone in? It's, it's, a, it's a good possibility. But with her breaking down and everything, I was focusing on trying to console her. And I was still thinking, what's going on with the why? But when you guys got there, um, you saw his pickup truck in the suburban there. Yes. So it appeared, did it appear like he was there at the house? He would have been there at the house? It, yeah, it because it, it's been like that a lot. But the only thing that was different is the door wasn't. The what? The door. He has a screened in door and then he's got a wood door. Usually when he's up, the screen the screen in door is the only door that's shut. The wooden door is open. Okay. Because he, he tries to cut down on all of it. But the regular front door was closed? Yeah. Did you look in the windows, anything? You know, just, I'm not second guessing you, but I mean, if, uh, with all that going on, you see the cars are there. Um, I'm honestly trying to at least I can go inside and take a look around or look at windows, something. I'm honest, honestly, man, I, I don't remember what happened at that point because it seems like something I would do because I don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. It really does seem like something looking through the windows and stuff, see what's going on. That, that is me because I'm a very cautious person. See what's going on. Mm -hmm. This is strange. I gotta see what's going on. Right. So it's it's a very good possibility. I walk around the house looking at the windows. I just, but if I seen something, then I would have said something. But apparently I didn't see nothing, and then she busted out crying. So. Okay. So since the the twenty third. Yes. Which is a Thursday. Yeah. What'd y'all do for the next week? Did y'all try to go back over there? Uh, she, she called family members because mm -hmm. I headed the door. Uh, first, she called Vicky. And Vicky gave her some story. I don't know all what Vicky said. And then she called her family up north. They oh, called her around. The stuff with Vicky. Okay. Uh, Do you know when Cheyenne called Vicky? Uh, I believe it was before we left uh, his house on the 23rd. Okay. And then she... Oh. Were you there when Cheyenne talked to Vicky? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I had to be standing right there. Did you hear what exactly Vicky said? Um, she 
something about that he was talking to her about going up to Georgia to visit family, take the matters with him. Is that what you heard, or is that what Shane told you? I don't know. It's a jumbo mess. <laughs> well, it's important. Yeah, I know. Uh, I've heard Vicky say it over the phone, but I don't know if it was actually that day. What other day would it be? I, I don't know. She, her and Vicky have been on the phone with each other quite a bit. Uh, back and forth, texting and everything. And... So Vicky said something about Bart told her he may be going to Georgia? Yeah, and taking murders up to see family members. Just like the text message written. Then that's immediately after that, when we got home, she called up there and started getting her family members to call around up there. Because she didn't know what else to do at that point. She thought he might be just in the process of going up there. And she told him something. Uh, he told, Mark told Vicky about he was going to get a rental car or something. And now, how do you know that? Uh, I, I got told that by Cheyenne. Okay. Vicky told Cheyenne that, and she told me. Then that's when I started second guessing the the truck being parked in a suburban. Hold well, on one second, okay. So Cheyenne told you that he was told by Mark mm -hmm. that he may be renting a car? Yeah, he was thinking about renting a car to go up there. Okay. Have you ever known to Mark go out of town? Oh, yeah. It, for the last, like, two, three months, mm -hmm. He, the landlady's husband died. She, he took her up to Georgia and stuff to help get some of that squared away and get his car, I believe. Okay. What do you mean car? Uh, he has a black HHR2. And uh, they went up to get it to bring it back or something. Where's, where's that car? Going? It's parked in the landlady's garage. Okay, so that, that car's still there. Yes, yeah. When they went up to Georgia, when... Mark and the landlady went up to Georgia. When was that? Uh, for the past three, two or three months or so, he's, he's been back and forth. Okay. What has he driven while he's been back? He's been, he drove the black as the smart. Which is the landlady. Landlady. Okay. Each time that he's gone, he's, he's driven that? Uh, as far as I know, yes. Okay. Because uh, the truck, it, sometimes it gives them trouble cranking. Mm -hmm. And the landlady lets him drive the suburban because it's automatic and it's easier. So anytime he's going out of town, he drives the, the suburban. Yeah. And then the, the last time I know of him going out of town before this, was he went to see his, I think his brother mm -hmm. up in Georgia that was sick, real bad sick. And then he came back down here. Who does Mark know in Georgia besides his brother? Uh, he, he got a cool family up there. He's got like seven or eight, maybe more family members stretched out from uh, Georgia to uh, Indiana. Okay. In that area, all right. That's where that's where all of their family are. And Cheyenne has called all these people up there. She and the ones she doesn't have numbers for, mm -hmm. her aunt Jen has numbers for. So she calls her aunt Jen, let her aunt Jen call around, and they call around, and, <coughs> and nobody's seen them. Okay, so nobody's seen them. Y'all, Cheyenne's tried to get a hold of the family there, and nobody's seen her. Have they heard from them or anything? Uh, they tell her nothing. So, okay, so we don't have, so right now we don't have any plans of Mark going up there. That, that's what's stumping me because nobody, no family members, and even Vicky after, I think, the 23rd in the afternoon or something like that, he, she went over there to Mark's house, mm -hmm. which that's strange upon itself because as by what he told me, 
if he met her, if them two were ever going to get together or anything, they met uptown or at her. So your knowledge, you don't know if he's ever been over there? Uh, as far as I know, no. Okay. Um, Except what the police officer, when he called her today, mm-hmm. and she said she came over, to the, she was over there at 23rd. So weird, though. I mean, you think with Mark going up to Jordan, he's always driven the so Suburban. See, he never rented a car. Why would he rent a car this time? This is, see, this is the thing that got me. And that, that's the thing that got me. That threw me off is because, okay, and then she told me she found his, his personal Metro phone in the Suburban. Who found that Metro phone? Shiny. She found his, his his personal cell phone in the suburban. She said that to you? Uh, the, the, she got the phone. No, um, did, did, did Cheyenne say, hey, man, I found my dad's phone in the yeah, suburban? Yeah. Did she say when? Uh, when, the land, when she got in touch with the landlady, the landlady asked her to drive that back over to her house. If she wouldn't mind taking it back over. And we should Where, sorry. Where was the suburban at? It was parked right in front of her dad's house. Right in front of the porch. And she went over there and she moved the suburban when I was at the house asleep. Okay. Do you know what day she did that? No. It had to be like on the 24th, 25th maybe. Because the landlady also asked her to watch the dog and stuff. Her dog. Mm-hmm. And so she said, I'm going to check on the dog and I'm taking the suburban back over to the landlady because that's what she wanted to do. She asked me to do. Where does the landlord live? Uh, okay. Uh, you go out his driveway, you take a left, and you go down past the woods that's on the left mm-hmm. to the first brick house. So just a short distance? It, uh, it's walking distance. Okay. Because that's what she did. She drove it over there and then walked back and got her car. Okay, so the landlord asked Cheyenne to move the suburban back to her house. Yes. And that's around that time, that's when she found Mark's phone in there? Yeah. And when she went to check the dog, that's when she found uh, the, his work phone that the landlady gave him, the iPhone 5 or whatever it is, laying up on the counter. And, hold on. And this is what Cheyenne told you? Yes. And landlord's out of town, right, when all that was going on? Yeah, she was in Kentucky. She doesn't come back till Monday. Which is... So, uh, so Cheyenne found Mark's work phone, which is an iPhone? Yeah, work phone laying right on the kitchen counter of the landlady's house. Does he normally keep that with him? He keeps both on the phone. He used it. And uh, one of the text messages he sent me was, I'm getting a new phone and new phone number. This phone number, the phone number I had now will, will no longer be mine. Um, did you have the number for his iPhone? Uh, she did. She did, but you did not? I did. And the, the number I had was his personal cell phone, and that's what the text message was sent to me on my phone number. Um, I understand you had the phone on this iPhone. You had it with you tonight? It gives a, a yeah. had it. But why did you have it tonight? Uh, well, she said she was thinking about calling on. I figured you don't want to find information on her. That was my thing. Maybe somebody contacted him, and he went to visit them instead. 
So you had the phone at night to kind of give it to the, the cop? Yeah, which the, that one detective took it. Okay, did Cheyenne know that? Yeah. Okay. So, and I was also told the F-150 or F-350, yeah. is that y'all's house now? Yes, uh, that, that's peculiar too. Uh, she found that she come back and told me after she moved to Suburban, mm -hmm. she looked at her dad's truck. Well, it had, the door was unlocked, it had all the keys thrown in the, you know, the door pocket, mm -hmm. but a key that doesn't go to that truck was jammed in the ignition. And it was jammed into it, and you can't pull it out. Okay. And uh, for a safety precaution in that situation, I figured, okay, well, he'll be back probably next week sometime to keep anybody from stealing it. Messing it up any, any further, I'll take it up there to the house, which my dad drove it. Okay. And that's when we took your dog kill and the dog up there too. So you decided to take it to your house to keep anybody from taking it? Yes. And what day was all this? Uh, this was the uh, yeah. I'm gonna say between the 23rd and maybe the 25th, maybe. I did it after I got, I got off work. So the day she moved to Suburban was the same day you guys um, uh, marched truck? No, that was the day she came back and told me the truck was tampered with. The, the key was stuck in the ignition. And it doesn't even, it, 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 she said the key that is stuck in the ignition goes to her windstorm van. And so what day did you bring the truck over? It had to be probably the next day. Next day of what? Um, she probably did that either on the 23rd or the 24th, so it'll probably be the 25th. Were you off at it all those days? Um, no, I did it after work. In the morning? Yeah. And your dad drove it? My dad. What's your dad's name? George. Hunter. He's driven some more long time, so I figured he can drive a stick back. So you drove your uh, HHR, drove you and your dad over to the park's house? Yeah. Me, your dad drove it from there? Me, Cheyenne, they went to pay bills or something, mm -hmm. and then it was going to my aunt's. Well, we got dressed, we went over there about, I started taking the dog pen apart. Because she said she wanted to take the dog too. I said, okay, well, that's fine. That sounds reasonable. And I called my dad. I asked him to come over and see if he'd drive the truck. Did he drive his own vehicle over there? Uh, my mom and him drove their uh, Ford Explorer over. Okay. And then we all just fell in line and okay. left. None of us went in the house that day because I was in a rush. Because I had to go to work that night. Did you ever go into the house? Into the Mark's house? Uh, first time I can actually 100% guarantee that I went into the house was they were yesterday. And what was the reason for going back to the profession over there? Um, and we're talking on Thursday. Yeah. Because right now it's Saturday. Yeah. Well, Sunday. It, it's Sunday for us, but I mean. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah. Because I, I had to go to work that night. Okay. And I uh, went back over there. And I, we went in and I asked her, well, what, do you, what do you want to do? And Vicky. Called her and said something about uh, that got her scared. Uh, she she was on that bed in uh, Meredith's bedroom. For some reason, she she really wanted that bed. I don't know why. Who's that? Uh, Vicky. Did you hear this conversation? Or yeah, I had text messages. And we, well, I, I want to get, I, I want to 
Love when we can get together and get that bed to my house. Vicky texted? Texted, and she's called the same and said pretty much the same thing she's texted to. Okay. So, in, uh... Wanting what bed? The bed that's in Meredith's room, which is Cheyenne's old bed. Why would Vicky want that? I don't know. She said Mark said she could have it. I ain't never heard him actually say it, so I was skeptical on just giving it. Okay. Um, did she say anything else? Did, did you hear this conversation? Uh, yeah, I heard it, and I told her none of this. I told Cheyenne, I didn't tell Vicky, I said, she ain't getting the bed because I didn't hear Mark say to give her the bed. So y'all went over there um, this past Thursday to, to do what now? We, we went over to check the place out, make sure nothing was messed with, and then the place ain't all that secure. Mm -hmm. I mean, you lean against the door a little bit and then pop open, even with it locked. She said, okay, I'd like to get, my, I'd like to get the picture out. Okay, the, family, the family picture, everything else can be got with, but the picture album's all on. Cheyenne said that? Yes. So we, we box up her pictures. Where'd y'all drive over there? Uh, the HHR. The black HHR. So Cheyenne wanted a picture album. What else she want? Uh, I. Asked her if there was anything else. She goes, I guess it's tools too, because I, she didn't want, she didn't want nothing of value really left in the house where it could be sold. Because she doesn't trust people. So I, I figured, okay, well, that's, seemed okay with me. Uh, so he, he we took his, his work tools up to my house and everything. And like I said, I figured he'd be back right now. Did Cheyenne take anything else out of there? Uh, did take anything else? Uh, we took uh, just a... There was a, there was a stack of... Uh, you know, old electronics, mm -hmm. which Mark told me they didn't work. But he didn't want nothing in sight that would want to coax people in the house. Okay. You know, because there, that one window only has a, like, mesh type curtain over it. Right. So it's anything that would coax people into the house, she, she wanted to get out of sight. And you got to think of calling the cops at all at that point? You know, you haven't heard from the guy. She family hasn't heard from him. She was still, her family at that time was still making phone calls around to people up there. For an hour almost. Yeah. Two weeks in, right? Mm-hmm. And she went over there on the 18th. I mean, it's a little more than a week now. Yeah. You haven't heard, you know. And that's when I, I, I told her, Yesterday, her family finally told her yesterday, okay, we don't know where he's at. Now it's time to put in a list of persons. Do you know if Cheyenne ever went over there without you? Uh, she did on several occasions. <clears throat> you know what she was doing over there? She, uh, well, she went to check one of the ladies' dog and went to make sure nobody was, you know, messing with the house. But as far as bringing stuff to the house, she never did that. The only time we did that was that one day. Um, and so just Thursday, that was the only time you've ever been in there? Uh, yeah. Okay, while all this is going on. Yeah. Um, inside the house, you know, those leather couches and all that? Yeah. Um, I saw some photos tonight, you know, they just kind of took pictures. Well, I'm sure they were doing that while you were there. Um, there's 
looks like on, on the couch there's like a pillow and a sheet, and then on the love seat there's a pillow and a sheet. Yeah, that is, that's where him and Larry uh, slept because he's got pictures on uh, one of those two phones that they took. Uh, he got pictures of Meredith July 18th sleeping on the couch, that, that love seat. Do you know Mark to sleep on the couch? Yeah. Okay. He said he'd rather sleep on the couch in the living room than in the bed. Though. Right. Um, when you were over there, did you smell anything? Uh, yeah, we, it, a real horrible smell. Uh, that she uh, pulled a coon out from underneath the house. And uh, threw it out in the woods. When and, was that? Huh? When was that? When was that? That was at that. that was probably two, three days ago. And then uh, we also found uh, dead. She said she found dead rats in the house. Too. Okay. Cheyenne found the coon? The coon and the dead rats in the house. Did you see this coon? Uh, no. Where did she say she found it at? It was up underneath uh, where the dog pen was. Mm -hmm. Up underneath the house. She said she had uh, reached underneath up, the house. Up underneath under, the house away. She grabbed it. Under near where the dog pen was? Uh, yeah, yeah, the dog pen. And then it was like uh, where it would be right underneath the couch in the living room. Mm -hmm. Where the pen was up underneath the house. You never saw this? Uh, no, she never did anything. She said that's evidently what was stinking up the house. And then when she did go in the house, mm -hmm. there was also uh, freezer burnt meat, third, mm -hmm. third in the fruit. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, a lot of information. But Shannon said she found this coon. She found the coon. Why would she go outside looking for it? Uh, uh, she looked around in the house. It, it, just after looking around the house and finding the dead rats, that's when she, and her cat come jumping out from underneath the, the house. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what business you're looking at. Can okay, I have any blood on or anything? From I, the as far as I know, I don't, I don't know mm -hmm. anything on that. Where were you at when Cheyenne found this thing? Uh, I was at home. Okay. And she threw it in the woods? Yeah. That's what she said. There were also some dead rats? Yeah, inside the house, which she threw into the garbage, and the garbage went out Friday. Okay. I'm sorry. And you said there was... Freezer burnt rotten meat. Yeah, she meat. said there was freezer burnt meat thrown in the sink, and it sat there, and it had maggots and stuff on it. On it. Okay, hold on one second. And it was still is it not bad? You remember what they disclosed in all this? It was before we brought the dog up to the house. Because she found the dick in the And the big two? And the yeah. big When did you bring the dog again? It was... Was it the same time you brought the truck over? Yes. It's clean 24. Yeah, it was perfect. You know, I had to go to work that night. This past Thursday? Yeah, I believe so. Oh. This past Thursday would have been the 30th. Yes, okay, that okay. Thursday would have been the 30th. It was the week before. Yeah. The 23rd, 24th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like I said, if I don't get it, if this was going to be something, I would have wrote down dates. Well, that's okay. But you were at home. 
Shane went over there. Yeah, to check on, check on her, her dog, mm-hmm. her, her, her dad's dog, and the landlady's dog. Okay. Um, why, why in the hell was there freezer? Why was there meat in that sink? Uh, it, I don't know. Uh, it, Mark, now if he grabbed something out of the freezer and it was freezer burnt, mm-hmm. he and that's what he was going to cook. That's what he wanted. He might have said, uh, "They owed it and threw the sink and went to McDonald's or something." Yeah. I, yeah, but if he was leaving, though, you know, he wouldn't have left it there. Exactly. Well, I, that, like I said, that's one of the things that don't make no sense. Um, but prior, around the 23rd, 24th, you never went inside the house no. prior to just this past Thursday? The past Thursday, that's, that's the first, first time I've been in Okay. And Cheyenne was just saying she smelled something bad yeah. under, the, under the house. Her cat ran out. Yeah. Something was smelling really bad. Our house near where the couch would have been. Yeah, and she looked up underneath there, and it, it was coming. She reached in and grabbed it by the tail and put it out. Because okay. um, when I was taking the dog pen down, it still stunk. Still stunk inside? It still stunk all over that area. Yeah. I mean. Okay. Um, where's the. She said she threw the meat in a. Trash with the rats and then threw that away outside? Yeah, put it in the garbage can and put the garbage can out because the garbage can was full. Okay. Where's the garbage can at that that she threw this stuff away at? Like inside the house? Uh, she probably just took it outside and threw it right in the Okay. Garbage. Where's it where's it kept though? I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I know where it is now. I don't know where it was then. Uh, where is it at now? It's right out in front of the porch. Where it's normally kept. Okay. I've seen it all over that yard. The city garbage can, I've seen it all over. Okay. Who took the trash out? Like the, the big can she city did, She did that. Okay, you didn't take it out at all? Oh, I, mean, um, I just bought it in today. Okay. Because it was flipped over. When's the trash run? When? Oh, okay, let, me, let me rephrase the question, sorry. Do you know when she took the trash out? The uh, road? It probably was Friday. Last Friday. I'm assuming. Last Friday, not yesterday. Yeah, it had to be last Friday because that's when the barbie came okay. At her dad's house. You didn't take it out. No. So the only other person that could have been was Charles. It was her because she went to check on the landlady's dog. She asked me if I wanted to go with her, and I told her, no, not really, because I gave it to work. So that would have been You're not saying it yesterday, but last week, which would have been twenty fourth? Yes. She did because obviously you had to go to work and I was at the house. Yeah. Okay. Well I got my routine I like to speak with. And so for today, the one thing, I mean, her family's just saying, look, we ain't heard from her. Yeah, he, 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 yesterday, they, they he, he, she was just all over herself yesterday. She couldn't think straight, nothing. She was crying and everything. I said, first thing, what we need to do is first thing in the morning, we're picking up, we need to call cops, we need to get this going because your family ain't heard from you, and now they're telling you to do it because they can't get in touch with you. And then y'all go there today. We, why, why is it so late this evening? Uh, why not like in the morning or something like that? We started this first thing. Uh, we uh, went to, because I got right off work, we went to the state trooper building. Okay, well, that was no, no good. So we called one of my uh, friends at work. He gave us the number to y'all. Then we called y'all. We drove home because we thought they was going to meet us here to meet us at 98 North. Mm-hmm. And then they well, we got to meet you over there. So we go back over there and it's 45 minutes from the house. Okay. Back over there. And then we started it and then that's where we've been ever since. Okay. 
and then they decided uh, that they was going to bring us in here and they put us. Hey, give us a couple minutes. I'm talking to my partner outside. And, uh, do you need anything? I don't know. I'm good. Hey, I appreciate you being helpful like that. I, I know it's a lot of information. I'm yeah, sorry it's going slow. We just want to get accurate details. I, I wish I could remember the dates for you. Yeah. I'm just, are you, are you, are you, are you doing good, huh? Yeah. I, ain't, I ain't never been too good at dates. No, it's okay. Give, give me like five minutes, okay, man? Yeah. Say, so I'm done.
also go with that sword? Or you also yeah. Well, I'm ready right, so if you need something, you come. bathroom or anything like that. Just let me know when I'll show you the bathroom and just walk you down here. Um, hey, uh, do you have a Gmail account? Gmail. Or what kind of email do you have? Uh, uh, I think it is Gmail. Do you know your... Dot, I mean my email address? Yeah. Uh, it's Maybe at the end of it or something? And by like 
rethink a relationship you, you and the relationship with Cheyenne? Yeah, because I, I mean, I, I was thinking, I'm uh, 23 years old, this is what to take on. I'm just now getting settled in my job. I've only had my job for three year and a half, yeah. give or take. And China's still working at Blues? Yes, yeah, she's been there for three years. And thanks it? Um, how did Cheyenne take that news as far as uh, the ultimatum, basically? No, uh, she broke down and started crying. She said she had a real rough week, but she did a lot of thinking, too. And that's when she decided that, yeah, Mary needs a lot more help than what's being given. Mm -hmm. And so we, we started fighting with uh, insurance work. In an insurance company and stuff like that, because then had to wait until she was six for it to come to medicine. Okay, well, we jumped that hurdle finally. Right. But then they still wanted to fight with the that pain in the mess for some reason. Right. So she was on the phone with them all the time. And then the medicine that they finally started giving her, which is on the Entertainment system mm -hmm. at her bed. Uh, it, one of them is a. They said she got smooth things too. So one's a mood stabilizer. One's for, I think, depression or something. And one's for nightmares or something. Because she, she has nightmares. I don't. I, she can't tell you what they are, mm -hmm. but she has. Uh, because I, I really seriously started, is, is this even worth pursuing anymore? I, can I even handle this? There, have you and Chayton had any kind of talks like this here recently? No. No? Okay. No, because I mean, everything's been, even, even with the bike ride and everything that we've had to do with her with, uh -huh. I've seen a change. It was stepping forward. It won't, it won't, because they're, they're for, up to that point of where I'm, I'm rethinking all this and everything, mm -hmm. there was no, you didn't see nothing. Right. It was, it was at Sanford. How's, uh, how's Meredith and Shane's relationship been here uh, recently? It is, it's better, but it's still, they don't know how to, it, they can't get on the same page for something. Um, have you ever seen like Shania just like get really upset at Meredith or lose it or you know anything like that? I'm sure it's tough. Uh, I mean, she 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 got upset quite a bit. Mm -hmm. You know, she really got angry quite a bit. Has she ever had any kind of physical outburst? You know, maybe shove Meredith not like maliciously. You know, just like push her away or. Um, uh, the only gone a little overboard in your opinion or anything? Um, now, I do admit sometimes she gets more, she gets a little rougher than what I like mm -hmm. because, in my opinion, there's boundaries. Right. Which hers too, but Meredith knows what buttons to push mom. Right. And I mean, sometimes she was she an actor, I don't know, she yeah. really turned that butt up a little bit. A little bit harder than what? A little bit harder than what, in my opinion, somehow should be done. Mm -hmm. But then, then, you know, I can push buttons, I mean. Yeah. So she would discipline her a little bit. A little bit harder than what, I mean, but nothing drastic. Like, uh, just hauling off and punching her or something like that. Nothing, I mean, abusive. Um, let's see. Y'all took Meredith to Mark's house on the 22nd, you said? Uh, no, no, it was, I think it was Sunday morning. That's right, excuse me, eight. 18th. Yeah. The 18th. I apologize. Okay, then you got the text message on the 22nd? Yes. Um, 
And that was the last communications I ever got from a man. Between that Saturday, that Saturday you worked, Sunday around 7 o'clock that morning, um, Cheyenne picked you up from work mm-hmm. um, on the 19th then. Yeah. And at that point, she had already dropped Meredith off at Mark's house. Yes. Um, do you remember what you did on the 20th? That was a Monday. Um, I went home and I slept. We got up and went to work. Yeah. So you went to work Sunday night? Sunday night. 10 to 7? Yeah, 10 to 7. And then got off Monday morning at 7. And then all I remember doing Monday was going home, watching a little TV, and then going to sleep, getting up, eating, and going to work. That's all I remember doing. Um, do you remember what time you went to sleep? I probably went to sleep about 930, 930, 1030, something like that. It's 8 a.m.? Yeah. When, what time did you wake up? I woke up probably around between probably 530, 630, something like that. I hit sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all do, man. Yeah. Uh, and what time do you have to be at work? I got to be there by uh, 10 at night. So I'll leave the house by 9, 9.15. Okay. Um, what about Cheyenne? What, what was she doing that Monday? Do you know? Um, yeah, to be honest with you, I don't. Uh, do you know if she was there the whole day? Or? I don't. I don't recall. I really don't. Um, But knowing her, she probably went to check the landlady um, or something. But this was before Mark went missing. Yeah, so she went out by that. She probably went to work. And it, 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 I can't tell you what her schedule was because it's always different. But you don't, you're not sure? I'm not positive. Okay. Now, when you go, when you went to work, did you drive the car or did you try and take you? Uh, she took me to work. Okay, so she was at least there at the house at around 9 p.m. to take you to work. Yes. Right? Okay. She came and picked you up on the 21st at that same time? Yeah. Seven? Yeah. <clears throat> What'd y'all do then? Uh, we might have went to eat breakfast. Uh, sometimes you do after I get picked up from work. It mm-hmm. depends on if I had lunch or not that night. Because sometimes I'm just not hungry at lunch. I, I believe we went and had breakfast though. Probably at Bob Evans and then went home. Got home probably at night. 8.30, And usually after we have breakfast, I don't even watch TV. I just go lay down and go to bed. Okay. Do you remember what time you woke up? Uh, probably about the same time. You know, about 30, 6, 30? Yeah, somewhere in there. Because uh, that's my routine. Okay. Do you know what Shane was doing that day? I <laughs> don't know. I think she had to work. Maybe 11 to 6 that day. That's why I'm not allowed to do that because I can't do that. Can't remember. Okay. Um, but she would have taken the car and all that. She would have took the car. And, <clears throat> and she always texts me uh, when she gets to work. Even if you're asleep? Even if I'm asleep. Even if there was no return to text, I told her always text and that's in the log. I'm pretty sure on my phone. Because every morning she goes to work, it, it's a given. She'll either text or call. And then on the 22nd, um, that Wednesday, she picks you up again at about 7? Yeah. And I went home, uh, went to sleep, woke up that afternoon. That's when I realized that uh, Mark is texting. 
Yeah. Time that I do. Yeah. I get a force. I get this when I text. When I actually. No, I was sitting over at my mom and dad's when the text came through. How'd you get over there? Walk. <laughs> we you got a camper, which where me and her stay. Mm-hmm. And then you got my mom and dad's trailer. Maybe 50 feet away from each other. <laughs> okay. It's walking distance. Uh, so the messages came through? And- yeah, and I, I read them, and then I was going, call and tell her, and then I decided not to because I knew she wasn't going to take it well, and I didn't want her to have an accident on the way home. So I waited until she got home, and then we went over to the camper, and I let her read the text messages. And you, you thought she was at work? Uh, as far as I know, she was at work. You know what time she got home that night? I'm gonna say that night, between uh, maybe six or seven, because it was still daylight on the way over to the camper, and she read the text messages. And you hear it all on Wednesday, right? I'm off on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Yes. Twenty-first was a Tuesday. Did you work that night? Uh, no, I'm off Tuesday, uh, Tuesday nights. Tuesday and Wednesday nights. I worked half of that month. But. Yeah. So on the 21st, she picked you up. About 7 o'clock, you went home. You went to bed between 8.30 and 9. Yeah. Woke up about 5.36. Um, did you stay there the whole night? Oh, yeah. What about Cheyenne? What, what did she do? Believe this or not, she got home at night. And then we went over to the camper on the street. Because I don't like going over on my bed. Right. What do you mean you went over to the camper on the street? Were you at your parents' house then too? Yeah, and, well, I, I wake up mm-hmm. and I go over and I hang out with them and watch TV with them until. Okay. Um. So on that Wednesday morning, Sharon didn't pick you up because you were at home. Yeah, I was already at home. Do you remember what you did? Yeah. I believe she, yeah, I believe she had to go to work at 11. 11 was 6 or 7 that that day. And I just hung out with my mom and Dad all day. Do you know what time she got home? Uh, had to be just before dark. And that's when you showed her the messages? That's when I showed her the text messages. Because it was daylight when we went over to the camper, mm-hmm. and it just started getting dark when we went back over to my mom and dad's. What did y'all do over there? That's uh, when uh, she wanted to discuss with them what what to do because she wasn't quite sure what to do. And my dad mentioned well, why don't you call your family up there and see if they see you. That's what she did. And that's what she did. And then that's when it started that. And then it took two or three days for her Aunt Jen to get in touch with certain parts of the family because they don't pick up phones just because it rained. Right. And then we got to this point. Yeah, I know earlier I was talking about, you know, the strain on the relationship because of marriages and her problems. Um, has Cheyenne ever talked about giving her up for adoption or anything like that? Oh, yeah. 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 And it's, and what, it was more so Cheyenne's part that, that put her up for adoption or maybe, uh, her dad taking a, uh, had maybe joint custody or something mm-hmm. to be the main, but yet she can see her on weekends because they, they can't handle being around each other for long periods of time, maybe. Right. So, because the original, the original idea was she was supposed to be with him for three, four days, and she was supposed to go see 
a little, you know, deer in there and see how it was. Well, then that got changed when the text messages came through. I don't know where the text messages came through the ones involving this yeah, stuff here. The, the, yeah, the 22nd. So how recent has Shane been talking about getting married as well? For uh, she's been talking about it for the past couple of months. Is that for her sanity, or is that for her relationship? It's, it's, it's for her because it, it, it tears my heart. She does, she's gotten to the point that she doesn't know what to do for her. All they do is basically fight. They do have their good times, but yet, you know, they, they argue more than they, 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 it's like a mom arguing with a teenager. Right. That, that's how. So this is hard on Cheyenne. Yeah, and she, she as far as like Meredith's um, yeah, attitude. Yeah, you talk to her. She's not the sharpest tool in shit. As the saying goes, she's slow on things. And, We're talking about Cheyenne. Yes. And she, she goes like, I don't know if I can handle it anymore. I'm just. I said, well, then this is when you need to decide what you need to do. Well, when. When did Cheyenne say that, that she don't know she can answer it? Oh, she said it several times uh, throughout the last two months. And then uh, she'll get the talking and then, well, I don't want really to give her up. But, see, the children out there, you love her. You don't want to give her up, but yet, you need a break from her. Yeah. That's why I thought her going to and the grandfather's wasn't a bad idea. Just give a, a break. Mm -hmm. And if I know this was going to work, we'll just sit down. Because the, she's, she went over to grandpa's for two days. Mm -hmm. You know, several times. When, while uh, Meredith was, was, was with Mark, um, was Shine supposed to go over there at all to check in or just to check in and see how they're doing or see if they need anything? They called and they, yeah. yeah I mean, she, she no, I mean, what was their actual plans of uh, Shine supposed to go over there on a specific day to, okay. to see them or anything? As far as I know on that, I don't know. Okay. Because at, at that time I was letting her handle it mm -hmm. because she's the biological. Right. I mean, I. I'm, I'm kind of an outsider. I'm, you're the biological mother. This is between you and your daughter. Y'all need to figure this out. When was the last time Cheyenne said that she couldn't take it anymore? As far as Meredith's attitude, problems, and the strength. Mother said probably 1st of July, I think. 1st of July. But then, it, like, like I said, it, it, it flipped. It flips to because she she really doesn't want it. It's just she needs her breaks. Was there anything that you can remember prior to Cheyenne saying making that statement? Was did they have a fight or any kind of physical confrontation or anything? We got an argument. Okay, so just the arguments would make her make Cheyenne say something like that. Uh, yeah, I, I think it was more of just frustration at the moment. Mm -hmm. It was no meaning behind it, just it was temporary frustration. Right, okay. Um, so she had been over to the for the When, after y'all dropped her off on the 18th until the 22nd, um, how was Cheyenne during that time? Uh, she, she started calming down, not being so stressed out, mm -hmm. and started, uh, I guess you could say, mellowing out, and started relaxing, okay. because uh, when, when Mary was around, she, she was on pins and needles. How was she on the 21st? Uh, 21st. Uh, she was, she was relaxed, she was laughing, because, uh, and then it, when that takes to uh, come in the 22nd, it just, what does he mean? 
I don't understand what he means. And it just it, it tore apart. I was her and uh, Mark. Mark, her and her dad relationship, it was, I mean, everybody has their little disagreements. Mm-hmm. They had their, they had their share. Were they close as far as the father and daughter? In my opinion, they could be closer. But I've always been real close with my mom and dad, so. Did you, get in, did you ever see them get into uh, arguments and stuff like that? Like when they yell at one another or something? Uh, he yelled at her to get, get her to understand something sometimes. He had to do that. Because if you yell at Cheyenne, she shuts down somewhat. She doesn't really want to talk. She just, she'll just sit there and just agree. Hey, when, um, you've been over to the house before, right? Yes. Um, have you been over there when Meredith has stayed the night? Yes. Okay. You've been over there when Meredith has stayed the night too, right? Yes. Okay. The, the couch and the, the love seat there in the, in the living room. Oh, that's only been there for about, <clears throat> I just helped him move it in on my, on my weekend. Yeah. I mean, I, I just helped him move it in. How, how was the cat? Where did you move it from? Uh, Langley House. Okay, so how, what kind of condition was it in? Pristine. Okay. Nothing wrong with it? No. All the cuts and scratches on it now, mm-hmm. I think it was done by a dog. I think that's when the dog was outside and they Okay. Because she has a bad habit about wanting to get up on the furniture. And she's got problems. Yeah. yeah. It kind of struck me because the only cut that me and Mark gave it when we were bringing it in the house was on the very back of the big couch. Okay. That was it. Um, and it, 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 you couldn't the, see it. The, the sheets, I saw the sheets and pillows, and I understand they sleep on the couch, but are those normally there? Uh, like if, if they're not sleeping on it, is that normally there? Uh, I don't know, man. This was the first time I've uh, been back over there since. I was over there when Tara was over there. Uh, you know, Tara's a, a very young family member from up north. Up in Georgia, she married to some guy that's related to him or something. Um, what do you have in there before? Uh, he had the blue couch on the porch. Mm-hmm. That was in there. But at one side, busted all the pieces. And there's a love seat. The love seat in his bedroom was out there. Yeah, what those then? Um, did he normally just leave sheets he, in the and, and He had a sh- on the big couch, he had his sheet and he had a pillow. Okay, did you, did you keep it like how it was with you? Uh, yeah. It's, yeah, because uh, he, he said, because he only had, uh, I think, right house or whatever it is hooked up to the living room TV, so he just hung out with it. The reason I'm asking you those questions, did you ever lift those sheets up at all? I've never thought about it. Okay. Well, when the detectives were over there earlier tonight looking around, the reason why we're treating this so seriously is there's blood, dried blood, on the love seat and the couch, okay? Um, the way it appears to be is that the blood's been there for some time, um, to the point where it smells like decomp. Okay, that smell that you're smelling, it's not from raccoons or anything like that. It's from a human body decomposing. Okay, um, could be, because I know the dog has... You know, this, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's pooled up to the point where it was starting to fall on the floor. Oh, okay. Okay, okay I didn't know. Uh, she she said she's seen some stuff on the couch, but it, to her it looked like where the dog, because the dog has, can't control its bowels. This isn't. She, to her that's what it looked like, that's what she described it to me. When did she describe this to you? Uh, a couple of days, two or four days ago, is when she first noticed it. What did she say? She said it, it looked like the dog showed it on the couch to her. 
And it has, the dog does have a thing that comes out of it, but it's it bloody. It's like a pinwheel, I guess. I don't know. She said maybe, maybe that's what it was. The other night, she don't know. What did she say she did with it? Uh, the dog was outside the whole time. Well, that's, that's, yeah. that's, yeah. She said maybe it happened before that, put it out there. So she doesn't know. And, uh... So what's she going to do with it? She cleaned it up? Obviously she didn't. Uh... She said it, it was too nasty for her to mess with. She just, she just went in and checked to make sure everything was all right in the house. And just left. That's what she told me. Yeah, there's no way that could be the dog. Okay, it's... it's we tested it and it's human blood. Okay? Um... I mean, I'm not, I'm not calling you a liar. I'm not saying you're, you're, you're being as truthful or anything like that. But I don't believe the whole story that Cheyenne is telling us, and I don't believe everything she told you is accurate either. You well, know, she it sounds like she's been over there several times by herself, obviously, because you've been at work or asleep during the day. You know, she's gone over there by herself several times doing different things. Has she ever told you about trying to clean up the house, anything? No, no, she did, said before she, well, before she don't move anything out of this house, she's going to make sure all the cockroaches are dead. Because mm -hmm. she doesn't want to bring them in the fest camp. Has she ever asked, well, you're at Walmart, hey, home, pick up, you know, some cleaning supplies, uh, air freshener, or anything like that? Uh, no, she did not. She did what? Uh, the air fresh, the candle things yeah. that was lit today. Yeah. That was the first time they was lit, and they'd been bought for a while. How long ago? Uh, they were there the, the, when they was there first. Okay, but do you know when she bought those air fresheners uh, and candles? I think she bought them. Uh, the night she dropped me off, when, when, okay, Thursday night, I think she was probably. It was past Thursday? Yes. So it was uh, the 30th? Yeah. Did you say why she was buying them? She said the house stunk. And she. She couldn't handle the smell. Did she say what she was doing? Or if she was going to clean it or anything? Uh, not in my recollection. Did she say she was there? Oh, wait, 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 wait. She did say something about it was staying on the floor or something that she was going to try to clean up or something. Where's the stain on the floor? I, I don't know. Did she say how she was going to clean it? Uh, she said she guessed with bleach. She's not sure. Did she say I was going to try to use bleach? Or, uh, or is that what you were just assuming? I'm assuming on that one. I don't really honestly know. Do you know what kind of shit was that she was going to clean up? She said there was already a stain in the living room floor. She was going to try to get that gone before the... She said it's been there since they moved in. Yeah, do you remember a stain or a stain being somewhere? I remember a bunch of scratches and all kind of dirty marks all over that floor. And you don't know if she says she was going to clean the house with bleach or anything? Why the hell would she be cleaning the house now if her baby's messing? Uh, she can't find her dad. I, I, I don't know that. I just took it as that's one of her little goofs up mm -hmm. her own thought pattern. Does her dad have a gun to do that? Yeah, so what kind? Uh, he told her to. Uh, this is this is hearsay now. I don't. Yeah, I didn't hear him say. It. Uh, bring guns up to my house because I know guns. I take care of guns. Yeah. If I have guns, okay. but uh, a twenty-eight, a single action, break open, 
there's a 410, it's called Snake Charmer. Mm -hmm. It's going to be Break open. And it was a 22 mark. Now, found a semi auto uh, 22 pistol. J Jamerson, Jam Jamerson is the name brand of it or something, but it's got a pistol on it. Okay. And uh, she didn't even know he had one. Is the only pistol she knew that he had was a revolver twenty two. You know where that's at? Uh no. We ain't found it. It was it supposed to be your house or his house? It would if that she said that's the one he carries on him at all times. He always has it in his front right pocket. Okay. What about these other farms? Are they at this house or your house? At my house. Okay. okay. Because I took it as a safety because I didn't want nobody to break in, have the gun, and then get hurt with them because you're coming in on the intruder already. So you I took think. them while he's been missing? Yeah, I thought I was trying to do a safety precaution for her when she was in shoes. Does Shane have a gun? Yes. What kind of gun? Walter P22. And that's also a time. She knows she. She ain't very good. Right, but she knows how to. She knows how to use it. She knows how to use it. Because when we work at night shift, I wanted to make sure. Because out there where I live, it, you get wildlife. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm talking about the panthers sometimes, hogs. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure she was. So, you think we've had, had people up in the yard and stuff like that. I just wanted to make sure she was safe. I told me what I did. Yeah, that's it. You know, Mark, they have any kind of roles with anybody? Uh, I know he was very opinionated. If he had a problem with you, he told you he had a problem with you. But to your knowledge, you don't know if he had any uh, Some, if, if he actually had a definite problem with somebody, he keeps it to himself. Okay, so you don't know. Because that's his, that's his way. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out why Shane's not being 100% with her, because she's not. She's not being 100% truthful with you, with us. I believe she knows exactly what happened inside that house. Is it possible she go? She lost her mind for a little bit. She she has act and not think. She has uh, got mad enough and blacked out. Like and doesn't want. Uh, black out. Uh, I don't know. She told me she's blacked out before, and that's how she got that one scar on her wrist. She doesn't, she can't tell you how you got there because she don't remember. She's, she's gotten a uh, high rate with a dad before and blacked out. And, but that was back when she was a teenager. But she tell you what happened when she blacked out that time? Uh, it, it was, by what she said, it was a brief blackout. Because her dad grabbed her and shook shit out and that's when he, uh, he, he slapped her. Has she ever gotten upset with you and blacked out? No. Yeah. What about with Meredith? Uh, not that I'm aware of. She ever say what she would do when she blacked out? Uh, other than getting that cut on her arm and everything, she doesn't know. She ain't ever told me. When did she get this cut on her arm? Uh, right now she's a teenager. What about now? In the past few days, have you seen Shane with any kind of injuries or anything? No. Okay. And she comes home in the same clothes that she left. That means you're not, because you work at night. Yeah. Well, the clothes that I put it this way. I work at night. Mm -hmm. I went, but when she takes me home in the morning, the clothes that, if she does go to work before I go to sleep and I see what she's leaving them, mm -hmm. it's the same clothes she comes back on it. So I don't. Okay. 
But at night, while you're at work, she be doing that. I, I, I have no clue what she's doing. Because I'm, I'm focused on what I'm doing. Hey, if you don't mind me asking, one of the things that came out with her interview is uh, she had an abortion not too long ago. Did you yeah, know anything well, about that? yes. I don't I know about that. My family felt that she was trying to get me hooked. Mm-hmm. Where I'd have to pay child support or whatever. But there did. I took it as it was just family watching out for me. Right. And then uh, I told her, the only, I think it's best for you just to get an abortion. Because married to have punch in the stomach and she took, she admitted to me that and my family that she took, uh, it was, it's a good abortion pill or something. How far along was Meredith, or excuse me, Cheyenne, pregnant on? Uh, six weeks, I think. Mm-hmm. I think I want say six weeks. Did you know her to get the abortion? Did you go with her? Oh, I was there. I was there for the whole process. Okay. My dad drove her home because I didn't have license. I mean, I just now got my license about two months ago because I, did, I didn't have a legal to drive. So I didn't see no sense of having a How long ago was that abortion? Where did she take the plan B pills? Uh, right after she thought she was How long ago? How uh, long ago into that? Uh, I think she, uh, I don't know, she took maybe three weeks into that. I figured there's the reason I didn't want to stay right now. Yeah, that's, that's the reason there's... We believe something happened to Meredith and Mark. Um, we also believe something... Shane has something to do with that. You know, just by... Stuff that she's telling you. Yeah. Um, the things that she's saying. You know, we're, we call her out on it, and we talk to people that she said told her information. Um, they're saying, I, look, I didn't say nothing that. You know, it, it makes no sense. Think about it. Yeah. I mean, you seem like a smart kid. This does not make any sense. Well, well, like I told that one detective over there, that this don't seem nothing like one. I mean, to leave all this stuff mm-hmm. that he's got to over the years, this don't seem nothing like it. Yeah. And if he was going to go to Georgia... I believe he took some over. Oh, absolutely. He's never ran out of cars. I mean, well, uh, if a landlady is paying for the gas and everything, why would you run a car? Mm-hmm. Even if you're not coming back, she should uh, she come get it. Or she would hire somebody to get it for her. Right. The woman's rich. There's, like, like I said, there's a lot of stuff that didn't make sense to me. Have you questioned or anything? Uh, have you questioned Cheyenne or anything like that? Yes. For so those that comes with it, better from this is what I mean. I, 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 there's actually three things now that I remember that I found a little odd. Okay. So, the first thing was, is when I was taking the dog pen down, I wanted to go in the house. I don't want to deal with the house right now. I don't want to deal with the house right now. That's what she was saying. That's what she said. So I didn't get to go to the house. We walked around and looked through the windows the best we could. And she has a key to it. She, she, she had the key to it. Okay. And then there was a couple... A day later, I said, I'd really like to see the inside the house, see if there's any you know, receipts or papers or anything. I don't feel like going Okay, well, that's. If we're here to find out. Yeah. I mean, you, you got somebody that's willing to help you try to figure out what happened to your dad. And the very place that he lived, you don't want me to go into. So. 
Is this all at the same time or at different points during this whole process? It was a two-day period. Okay. Because I, I uh, went over to them. Um, okay. She was with them going to have that day. Okay, I was thinking, okay, this is still hurting her a little bit, you know. I was doing the good fiance thing, okay, I ain't going to pressure. Right. Or I thought I was doing it. Sorry, see what I uh, but anyway, and then a couple of days later, I said, I'd really like to get my house, you know, let's see what's going on. Because we were just, we were over there taking care of the landlady, the old, no. I mean, it's right next door. Yeah. Okay. No, I, don't, I, don't be I don't want to deal with it, I don't want to deal with it. It's her, it's her baby. Her baby's missing. Why don't you want to deal with it? Yeah. And, and, and the other thing that struck me is we went to the storage unit and there is some of the stuff missing out of the storage unit. There is a camping stove that's missing because we had two or three of them. He wasn't what you call a boom day prepper. He was a, if something happened, I got the stuff to just yeah. back up and stuff. It, and it, 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 and then she, she said she found the titles in her lockbox that was signed by her dad, signed over to her, to, to the vehicle. Okay, I was thinking, okay, you're getting old. Now that's logically, you know, it's already signed, pre-signed over. But I just, I, like I said, the first time I stepped foot in that house is when we got some stuff in there. That's it, that was the first time I stepped in there. It was just a few days ago, right? Yeah. It was uh, Thursday morning. So we came and, and we stayed there. To, it was like we got over there by 11 and we stayed till like 4 o'clock. Get photo albums and stuff that she didn't want to get messed up or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just, I, I go to work, I come home. I do, I do the, I do the, the, the basically the husband thing. I this bring her to him. This has never happened in the history of Meredith has ever been at the box house, right? No, because I, I'm talking about, yes, he would get my head at your hands. No, I mean, I'm talking about Matt Martin just up and leaving. Up and leaving, exactly, no. No, no, not that up. Ever. He would get mad uh, with her and not talk to her for a couple of days. Three or four days. Not talk to Shane, not return none of her text or anything. But then they would start texting each other and talking to each other, you know. They might be blood up. Right. Here, give us give me a moment, okay? You good? Um, you need anything? Uh, you need a snack or something? No, I'm just good. Right. I'm good. Okay. I just don't have to know what the hell is going on with me. That's what we're trying to figure out.
so. I thought it was kind of strange. This shit that she's been investing in the world. Okay. Well, the first time I came over, there was a shovel in the town. There was a what? A shovel. A shovel? Yeah, when he went to the flat, he had a shovel. Mm-hmm. Well, it was like this great concrete building or something. Yeah. And a shovel in the town. It had water in it. That's the rust thing in the town. I don't know if you're eliminated there or whatever. See if you're blood or something. But she also asked me something funny at Walmart. What's so? up? How long does it take maggots to decay a body? What? Uh, yes. And she asked me, and she asked me if I thought one of those big 55 gallon tubs would hold the body. Why did she ask you that? This is maybe three, four days ago. Let me grab my pants so I can make sure I'm yeah, not lying down. Yeah, I mean, I just remembered this. Okay. All right, here. Yeah. Give me a moment. You know what you think she from somewhere? That's why he's looking. Uh, could he somebody kind of sit around? Or? Well, I mean, especially now, if she's asking you these questions. Well, see, that's, that's the thing. I, I found it peculiar yeah. when she... Let me, let me grab my pad, okay? I want to make sure I write down the right, the right info. Where's the tub? She did buy a tub. What tub? One, uh, one of the five speakers you know, t- tubs that she, uh, you store stuff. How big is the tub? Yeah. Like a tub of thing? Yeah. How big is the tub? Probably about like this, about like this. Okay, hold on. Let me make a note real quick, okay? Because she was carrying it down when she would get the chemicals. What chemicals? The, I believe she bought bleach and then the, the, the smell good stuff. Okay, hold on. That was the same night she asked me the question. Okay. Okay. Now I got my banner. So a couple of days ago, we were at Walmart. She took me to work, and I'm working. All right. Okay. And she she asked me if how long does it take maggots to decay a body? I said I, I don't know. Uh, Saying I never thought of. It. <laughs> and then she goes, "What do you think a body of fit in one of the big rubber meets touch?" I said, "I, I don't know. Maybe." I, so how long does it take maggots to decay body? Yeah. And then about the two, um, I, I thought it was kind of strange, but she told me here two or three weeks ago that a girl asked the same question at her job. Asked her. No. I'm because I'm trying to. You said why well, I had it right. What she say about this toad or how that come up? Uh, she. I was struggling. You were what? I was struggling. I was doing my job. She was there shopping. And I wrote by and she goes, you, you think a human body would fit in one of 
little coach. I looked down and said, I don't know. I ain't never thought about it. And now since all this, it's kind of what were, you yeah. thinking, what were you thinking at the time, though? I mean, not an ordinary question. She, 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 she told me them. about two, three weeks ago about a girl asking pretty much the same question. Yeah, I told her, I don't know, that girl sounds like she has something high. But then she had to turn around and ask me, and I was, I was busy working. I really didn't work. call it, you know, I'm already behind because I had to fix the machine. So I didn't think much of it then, but as I walked out, I'm sitting here, and I'm saying, oh, well, wait a minute, she asked me these questions. And then I've seen maggots decay, you know, on coons, and I've seen maggots, you know, on other stuff. No, mm -hmm. The first time, first time I was in, we went into the house, mm -hmm. there was a shovel, if I hit a shovel, in the tub. Do you know why that would be that? I don't know. Her dad does bring tools into the house. Yeah. I mean, shovels and stuff like that. Put in the bathroom. That, that's, that's the part that I found a little odd. You said something about water being in the tub as well? No, no it wasn't in the tub. It was pulled because the shovel was tied in there. Mm -hmm. it, it, the water was sitting in the, the shovel. Okay, so the head of the shovel, there was water in the head of the shovel? Yeah. Like it was cleaned off, is that what you're assuming? That's what it kind of looked like to me, and it's all rusty. And I'll grant you, he don't take the best care of his tools. He does everybody else's, but not his. Now, just to go back just a second. So you're at work. Yeah. You just happen to ride along on this little scrubber machine. Yeah. And she just comes out and says, do you think a body would fit in this tube? Uh, not at right all. She it was. She drove up a conversation. What about and, what do you remember? Uh, about some girl at work. That's the day. The some girl at work asked her, and then she got curious or something. And she wanted to ask me. So she just said, "Hey, some girl at work wanted to know yeah. if a body would fit in the tote. Yeah. One of these little plastic containers." Yeah. Did and I know? said, "I don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe." So she asked you. Think body fitness? Yeah. Did she buy it? She, when she was walking around, I believe she bought bleach. I believe she bought, uh, she bought two things of, uh, Febreze, or whatever the can smell is, or it is. Two candles, hornets, spray, I believe. Two cans of that. Okay. And she was walking around with two. Did you ever see her walk out? I, I never seen her walk out. The last time I seen her, she was squatting down and looking at the uh, snow missing. Was the tote worth her then? I believe so. What time of night was this? Uh, maybe, I, I clocked in at 10, maybe 11, 12. And what warrant do you work at? Uh, uh, North 98. Oh, there was my death road? Yes. No, the banana road? Yeah. Yeah. No, this is, no, this is just a question. Um, how do you, how do you guys do your finances? Do you guys have an account together or something? No, no, no. I got my own separate. My brother, he got, he got for the woman and he don't account for it. Well, she, they never had money. Okay, well, I ain't gonna be like that. They're gonna have separate. So I made sure we kept separate accounts. How does she only pay? Does she only pay with cash or, or a debit card? Uh, she does probably okay. intermittent. I mean, sometimes uh, she'll pay with cash, sometimes she'll pay with just a debit card. And I heard through her bank, she does have a credit card up to a $500 loan. Okay. Um, where did you see her carrying around this food? Uh, about ten thirty eleven o'clock. I don't know. Did you see where did you see your carrying it? It was over there at Kimball. Uh, where did she bought the bleach and stuff? Yeah. 
And this was after she asked you that question? Yeah. It, it, it might not have been the same day now, but it, it was it was close to it. Close to it? Yeah, like a day or so before she might have asked. Because I just kind of blew it off. It was, you know, but you believe she got the tote the same time she bought the bleach? Yeah, and the bad thing is, ain't seen the tote. But that, that's why I started thinking, too, was she was walking with a tote. But yet, I ain't never seen the tote after. Yeah, the, why would the hell would she even buy one? Do y'all have a need for it? Uh, she said she was going to get some stuff out of her store again. Now, I do grant you there is a tote, empty tote, in the store again. Mm-hmm. But it's not the water, it's on Exactly. It, it's, not, it's the same color. But is it that, that this is this is what it started? I started thinking because, like he he brought a good point. I don't have a clue what she does after I, I go to work. No, are you telling us this now because you're trying to hide your involvement in this? Oh no no no! I just I just thought about it. I just remembered this because it just I mean I'm not I know I'm not it worried, but it's just. Just yeah. now, I'm starting to give you all these pieces of this puzzle. No, I, like, okay, I, 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 I just now remember this stuff. Why, I, I, it started falling in for me. Why, why would you ask me these questions? Why would the shovel be in the back? I even questioned it to her when it was in there. The shovel was laying out back in there. She grabbed it that day and threw it out back. Did you help her get rid of the bodies? No, I, I thought, honestly, he was up north. Maybe he did rent a car or something. Yeah, but it's not like him. Exactly. That's the thing that kept getting me. You can, I mean, you're telling me the, the, the truth right now. She bought all these chemicals, and she bought this coat if it would, if a uh, dead body would fit inside of it. This, all the stuff she asked me, everything I told you, is the things she's asked me and the things I've seen her with. And you're not lying to me. No. You're being 100% truthful. All the way. Why would she ask you about Maggie's came and body? What the hell brought out that conversation? I don't know. That one was out of the book. When was? When did she ask you that? I, I shot a coon here a couple weeks ago that was trying to get the chickens, and I threw it down there by the fire pot. I don't know. Maybe she went down there and see Maggie's on it. I don't know. When did she ask you this? When? Uh, the same day she asked me about the totes, uh, tote, um, let me see, three, I'm going to say three, maybe four days ago, I don't know. Where, where were we all at? Uh, I was on the scrubber. So this is all at Walmart? This is all at Walmart. I was doing my job when she asked me. So, I mean, she asked you the same place as, as the two? Yeah, right there. Yeah. So, cool, man, at that point, you didn't put fucking two and two together and think something well, wrong here should probably call somebody? No, because she does shit like this all the time. She has random questions. She asks you random questions about, especially with everything going on right now. Uh, she asks you about decaying bodies and, you know, trying to get rid of bodies and totes and stuff? I, I had a ride up. I wasn't thinking about anything of that. I was just. I was worried about doing my job that night and going home, not getting no more write-ups, because one more write-up, I'm fired. That's all I'm thinking about. That was all I was thinking about that night, because they called me in and wrote me up. So a couple of days ago, that's when she asked you three, Yeah, three or four days ago, something like that. Is it the last day you worked, or when? Maybe, I don't know. Because right now, I mean... Obviously, today's Sunday, but we're, we're still thinking Saturday right now, okay? Okay. Um, um, it, it was sometime last week. Last week between 26th, I don't want to show the date, okay? Sometime being this week, the 26th, that week there. It, it would have to be sometime between like the 25th through 29th, right? Maybe. Or the 26th, somewhere. No, I should have put it yeah. Anything else you're, you're not telling me, or you just leave it out, or not remembering? She used to take her gun up. Uh, 
Oh, uh, she she was taking her gun over there for a while. Where's her gun at now? It's at the house up on Chester Road. Are you sure? That's where it was last time I seen it. I don't know, but are you sure it's right there right now? I'm not 100%. Well, when was the last time you saw it? Last time I saw it was, uh, last night. Yeah. Last time I saw it was last night. She told you anything else? She'd tell you how to dispose the body? She didn't no. mention of anything like that? She never knew anything like that. Just those two questions about the toot and the mice, that's it. And you didn't help around any kind of way. Like I said, I thought he was up north somewhere. I thought he'd come home in a couple of days and he'd want his stuff back. That's that. That was my last inclination on anything. What? What's she the bleach for all the thing? Do you have bleach at your house? I don't know. My mom washes clothes on. Okay. I'm not but it's, but it's normal for her to buy two things of air freshener, two candles, you have a college, and all that for you, for your place. Uh, yeah, we love it. Uh, the, can, the candles and the, the sprays and stuff, yeah, we done it. Because our septic system, it, it fills up and it stinks, and then we got to drain it. Yeah, but put two and two together. Yeah. It, it's hey, dude, how long does it take Max to decay a body? Yeah. Does a dead body fit in a tube like this? Exactly. Now I gotta go buy bleach. Yeah, and show her, show me the She has it. And she had to do it while I was just like, what? Because I didn't have it. Uh, are you sure you're not involved? Is that, I mean, I know it might have convenient, you're just, I just remembered it. it. No, it. I was supposed to remember that. I have. No, because you can go, you can go to my job and ask the guys I work with. When I'm there, I'm there. I don't yeah, need. You got Tuesdays and Wednesdays off. Tuesdays and Wednesdays off. There's plenty of time to go over there. Plus, you don't know, work 24 hours. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I ain't never seen him. The last time I seen him was when I helped him with the couch. That was the last time I seen him. Seen him. I mean, that's absolutely the last time I seen him. And last time I seen Meredith was the night that, he, that uh, she stayed with my dad and went work. She gave me a hug. Did you notice anything different out there? It sounds, it seems like everything pretty much looks the same except there's a lot of mowing missing. What about the what about the outskirt of the house in the bottom? You know, it has like a, some type of like a vinyl siding or something. Yeah, I, I tore that off with the, the cop there because he was checking the smell. You tear it off. What the one complete side or a portion of it? Uh, different spots. One complete side against the wood line. I, I tore off because I was up underneath. It. I was looking with a light, but there's so much. Um, what was this? That I was. Okay. Today? That was the day. And the cops were there and before the cops were there? The, 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 well, that one cop was there. The Polk County Sheriff guy. With the green. The heavy set guy. That was the only. Um, Think about if there's anything else you're leaving off. No, that's the only thing that's coming. All right, I'll be right back, bro. I didn't have to do shit. I know that for a fact. I've been work, come home, I stay home.
That, that, uh, the gun that she has, the Walter, is it a, is it a semi-auto? Yes. And by the last time you saw it was, it was on top of the dresser, you said? Yes. Okay. And, yeah, because uh, as you go, this camper, you go on the thing, as you go from the bedroom, it's not where you would put the TV. I call it the dresser, but it's where you put the TV. Where is that now? That's the last time you saw it. That's the last time I saw it. That's, that's when I went to work last night. Okay, so it might still be there. It could still be there. Okay. Listen, dude, she's over there talking right now. 
What, what did y'all do with them? She fucking lying. I did not touch no dead bodies. The only dead body I ever touched was dead coons no. or a possum. When we, when we find these bodies, and we will, okay? I, I guarantee you, your DNA, your fingerprints are going to be all over it, okay? Right now, listen, now is the time to be truthful. Continue being truthful and just tell me what y'all do with those bodies. I'm being 100, 110% so with you. I've never seen. Okay. God's honest truth. What did you help her do with something? Did y'all bury that somewhere? Did she have it wrapped up in a nice little box, container, something? I didn't bury nothing. What did y'all do with... Listen. We're playing semantics now, okay? What did you help her get rid of? Did y'all take something to a, a, a trash can? Uh, no. I've, I've never helped her throw away anything or nothing. Dig anything? Nothing. Honest. And I, I'm being fully honest with you. I ain't never helped her get rid of anything. I helped her go over to her dad's house and box up a couple of DVD player VA, and VCRs that she's in uh, the pictures, and she said she wanted to take them to the house where it wouldn't get ruined. That's the only thing I helped her do. You yeah, obviously that's not what she's saying. Okay. My brother told me I should not for this chick. I ain't helped her throw anything or bury anything. Ain't have to do none of that. I go to work, come home, go eat breakfast. That that's all I do. Think about this little girl right now, okay? She doesn't deserve this. No, she don't. She don't deserve to be where she's at right now. Okay? Yes. It's a terrible tragedy of what happened to her, but she's be laid to rest in a proper place, not where y'all put her. I didn't put her number. You helped her. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You helped her. Her little girl and her father. I have not helped from anything away. I it's not anything. A person. A okay. body. Her daddy and her daughter, I have not helped get rid of. The last time I've seen them, Dude, you're not a dumb dude. You're not a dumb dude. No, I'm not a dumb dude. And she's asking you all these questions in Walmart. You know what's going on. Okay? Now, right now, this is not the time to lie. Okay? This is a very serious investigation going on right now. Okay? And I know you had more involvement than what you're just trying to portray right now. No, dude, I, I'm scared shit this right now. I, I had nothing to do with this. You and should be scared because you're lying to me. No, as far as I know, she was going over to take care of the dog and shit. I, I don't know what she did after I went to work or none of that. I'm telling you the truth. I, honestly, I, I've done none of that. I don't believe you. I'm sorry. But we've talked. For how long have, how long have you been with the cops? I don't know. Okay. For a very long time, correct? Yes. All right. And you still maintain being cooperative with them, right? Throughout the whole process, right? Okay. Still being cooperative. Yeah. And I appreciate it. But, but listen. Throughout the whole thing, you just so happen to have Mark's second phone on you, the iPhone. That she handed to me off the fucking counter. Okay, but you've had it with you the whole time you were with cops, correct? Yes, and okay. she went to the car and grabbed the phone out of it. I thought she grabbed that one, too. But didn't you have it in your pocket? No, I had to go get it out of the car door. It was where, where you pull, where you have your hand hold. Mm -hmm. That's where it was sitting. And that's when you gave it to the detective? Yeah, I turned right around and handed it to him. Okay. I believed in nothing. I didn't do shit to it. Okay, and at the whole time, you didn't watch, care to think, hey, you know what? She's asking me some crazy-ass questions. I might want to tell the cops that. It, it didn't go up until now. Honestly. I'm just, I'm 
I honestly thought he'd come back in a couple of days, wouldn't matter, or they were just visiting somebody, and he would be back. You didn't hear the clue phone ring whenever she's asking about maggots and decaying bodies? Yeah, but she asked fucking ambient questions like that all the damn time. With her fucking daughter missing, and her dad missing. True. And then buying bleach, and everything else. I know, I didn't pay attention. I, I was more worried about my fucking write-up. Okay, that's where I fucking faltered. I was worried about my fucking write-up, my job. Yes, I'm a fucking fool for that. Um, so sorry. But, I didn't help her get rid of anything. The only time I've been to that house was to get the dog, take the truck to the house, and it had nothing in it. See, how big is Mark? Mark, I don't know, he's uh, maybe a hundred and... I don't know, look to me, maybe 130, 145 pounds, maybe. She doesn't look that strong to me to lift or carry that size of a body. She can pin my ass down. Come on. No, she's pinned my ass down. We played Brassel. She's pinned my ass down where I couldn't get up. You expect me to leave? She's able. You expect me to believe she's able to drag her dad, her dead dad's body, somewhere, and then dispose of it without your help. I have not helped her get rid of anything. No, but that is that what you're expecting me to believe? No. I, okay. Yeah, she might have got helped by somebody, but it damn sure wasn't me. Well, who else is going to help her? I don't know. Josh, and he's right there. Uh, yeah, well, let's go grab the neighbor. Well, no, no, no. She's I don't know. She's, she's my, I have other friends that I don't know about. I don't know none of her friends. And as far as I know, she don't have any. Well, it's highly unlikely she's going to have somebody else help her then, besides you. Well, she had to have somebody because I didn't help her get rid of nothing. Did y'all think y'all were going to get away with this? Get away with what? I didn't know anything like this was coming. I go to work, I go home, I sleep. I go, I, I'll go eat breakfast after I get you know, work sometime. Look. We'll, we'll sort out what happened to these people later. But right now, I just want to find them. Just tell me where she's at. Dude, I ain't telling you God's on the street. I have absolutely no clue. All I know is she's with her grandpa somewhere. I thought they were alive. I didn't know there was decomp in the house until you told me. I didn't know anything about anything like that until you told me. I didn't even start thinking that way because I didn't think she was capable of anything like this. What was her attitude, Demir? How was she acting ever since uh, you know, her, her dad and her daughter been missing? She's been panicky. Crying all the time. Like legitimately? Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not good with people's emotions. But it, it seems legitimate to me. She ain't eating. She ain't sleeping. Really? That seems like if my mom and if my dad, if, my, my, if I had a daughter that been missing, I'd be out there. I'd fight hell itself to find them. And I'd be out there all the wood. But. I honestly didn't know anything, like, anything y'all were saying happened. Did you just not care for Meredith that much, not even to look for her? Because you said you fight, you know, I looked with what I could look. I, I didn't know where to look on stuff like that. In case she's, when I heard run car, okay, maybe. But it didn't seem likely. What? The room? Car? I, maybe. It didn't seem likely, though. Okay, well, maybe she's hiding out at Vicky's or something to teach her a lesson, because he did say, I want to teach my daughter. Uh, one day I'm going to teach that girl a lesson. He did say that. He told my dad that, too. He told me that when I was at, uh, helping him with the couch. Teach your lesson how? He never went into details. He said, but one day she needs to be taught a lesson. And I'm going to have to teach it to her. 
What else are you hiding or leaving out? Not telling me. Uh, there's, 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 there's a lot of stuff. You're thinking of a whole bunch of stuff right now. No, no, I, I'm thinking, but it, I ain't got nothing. It's all there. I'm, everything's there. I didn't think nothing about any of the bullshit she said because she's already saying a bunch of bullshit. She thinks zombies are going to happen, too. She thinks apocalypse is going to happen, and the zombies are going to come down, and that's what's going to rule the world or some bullshit, and we're going to have to fight them off. Just think a little bit more, okay? All right? Okay. Uh, honestly, guys, I don't know. I didn't know anything about this happened. Sleep. I go over to my mom and dad. That's all I know.
Did you did you and try and imagine eyes? Like pocket eyes that fold open? I'm sorry? Whatever. What do you push the button and it comes out? This one had a little bit. If it's too tight, it won't do it. But, uh, uh, I bought a black one that was about that long, the way. Uh, she had one like it too. Did y'all buy it together or sure? Yeah. I, bought, I bought mine and she, she liked it, so she took it. So I had to buy me another one. Do you wear the nice stuff? It's in one of my little her knife. I don't know. That's so nice her knife is. No, she says she don't even know where it is. When did she say that? It's been a while back. Okay. And uh, my knife is in because I'm taking screws out of it to repair my other. Okay. When a while back she says she lost her knife. When was that? Uh, like what's a while back? Years ago? Months ago? Oh, no, I didn't know. Uh, Weeks? Two months? Maybe. Listen, don't be straight with you. She's a she's poor guy on this. She told her dad and her daughter. She did? Mm-hmm. Because you know, I can tell you what she said. She said that her dad's mean to her and stuff, but the deal is that she thought that was going to be between y'all's relationship, her daughter. She'll be arrested. Well, I assume that I've heard and it's looking me. Well, we'll get you a ride and we'll get you out of here. We'll move like that. You can still make sure. So, this one's so coming in, so we'll get you home. I didn't have so that, that, that gun is a water? It's a water. Where try. exactly is it at the house? Uh, okay, you walk in the camper door? Mm hmm. And he's on a dresser or something? And you go up the steps, you go through the living room, through the kitchen, and uh, up into the the bedroom, where the TV, because it's, it's a 70s model, mm-hmm. just so it's for the big square TVs, mm-hmm. it's like, it should be laying right there, that's the last time I okay. said it. Did you see it today? Uh, last night when I went to work, okay. I ain't even been over She's been, you, I think you told these guys, correct me if I'm wrong, that she had been carrying it with her over there? She's been carrying it with her. Has she been leaving it there? I don't know about that. Well, I mean, was she carrying with her? Is she taking it back home every night? Do you see it every night? I, no. I don't I, no, there's, I don't see it every night. She tells me how I left it in the glove box of the car. And I just took it for granted. That, but she, right. Did she tell you she was leaving it over at the house? At her dad's house? No. Okay. As far as I know, she told you that one the glove, glove, glove box, one glove car. box. Maybe under the seat. I just know she carries. She carried it in the car with her. And uh, the only other question I, I got is, I moved it from in front of the TV because that's where it was. I put it up where it is, so it's gonna have my fingerprints on it. You moved it from where? In front. Of, she had it set in front of the TV. Yeah. Up there. Okay. So, what's so the I option? moved it. Like. You're afraid your friends are going to be on it? Oh, I know my friends are going to Did you kill anybody with it? No, I didn't. I ain't even, I ain't even shot a gun to, except the rock when we get a coon. Did she, did, when she was asking about those toads, did she get toads that night? Or that day, whatever it was? I seen her with one, but I never seen her leave the store with them. With one. What does that mean, though? Did you ever see her leave the store with no, I never seen it. That's what I'm saying, because she would bother me and not know about it? Yeah. Okay. Because I never seen it. Sit that for me. I'll, I'll, I'll give that. Yeah. 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 What about this stuff that she wanted to took from the dad's house over there? Y'all want to take that with y'all, right? What do you mean? Well, like the, the DVD player and the VCR and all that. Where's it at now? It's at my house. It's in the camper because she said there's some of that stuff she wanted to look at, and there's movies there too. Okay. Well, we'll deal with it, okay? We'll figure that out. But she did it. Yeah. Yeah, she told us she did it. Uh, well, for whatever rhyme or reason, buddy, I, I can't tell you why or see, I, why she did it. I thought, see, I've always been worried about finding your own girl. Mm-hmm. 
So I, I was looking for one. My sister in law said, Hey, this girl, she's, you know, she's picked all this school like you were and everything. I thought I found somebody. Right. And, you know, about it, it's hard to tell. You know, it's hard to tell how people are. But. That's good. Full on getting seen. Hey, um, if you don't mind giving me that, I'll, I'll just say your dad in here, okay? Sure. Okay.